Amen. I've had some questions <coughs> which are related to some of the issues that we've been discussing. So I just wanted to basically run through them to see people's questions had been answered to their satisfaction. So I'm not sure whose questions these ones are. Okay. Um, <coughs> question one. What clarity do we have concerning the events, if any, that will take place on November the 9th, 2019? So I don't have any more clarity uh, concerning that e the events that are going to happen then, they're not already in the public domain or that I've already discussed. Um, hopefully yesterday's discussion, um, which is already on the board, has helped to some degree to answer the question, even though it does, the study didn't specifically say what was going to happen or what was not going to happen. Um, so I don't have any more information on that. Um, it's probably not a very good response to your question. Uh, number two, if Sardis means red, which equates to being alive, does this just relate to the name that they have as God's people rather than their actual dead condition? So I'm not sure if I understand the question. Yes, so there's an expectation that they're supposed to be alive, they're given a name that corresponds to what their behaviour should be, <clears throat> but on investigation they're found to be dead. So my understanding is this is the uh, experience that the Protestant churches in the United States uh, have when the everlasting gospel comes to them three angel messages, there's an expectation that they're going to accept it because they have been called out of Babylon and what ends up happening is <coughs> when the call is made to accept the everlasting gospel, to put their lives in order, you actually find that they reject all of that message and that they're actually spiritually dead even though, that they, even though they claim to be alive. Um, so, when we talk about this experience, I think it needs to be connected to, to, I guess what we currently, the way we currently explain the time of the end, 1798, in respect to coming out of Babylon. So, for me a nice um, study is when you go back to the story of Cyrus and you see the work that he and Darius do when they destroy Babylon and not only did they destroy Babylon but then there's a that's part one of their work and the second part of their work is to bring freedom to God's people so they do a twofold work to bring down Babylon and to allow God's people to return back to the glorious land. And that work that happens in the time of Cyrus, 538, 536, is the same work that happens at the time of the end in 1798, when France delivers a deadly wound to Babylon or destroys Babylon, and then the United States uh, brings freedom to God's people and they leave Europe to go to the United States or the glorious land. So you see two histories there. Um, 
And the story of Sardis is obviously connected to that second one, where there's an expectation that they're supposed to come out of that captivity or that condition where they definitely are in darkness or dead. They have life, but you find that they're actually not in a good place. And this is the condition that Adventists find, Adventism finds itself in 1989, where we're called to come out of captivity and when that call is being made, instead of having a name that corresponds to the experience that we're supposed to have, we find that we're actually still laid a seeing. So I don't need to answer that question. Of course, red isn't the only definition for sadist. Um, I think we read a couple of them. There's obviously the red ones, which is from Thea. Uh, Hitchcock says, I think someone mentioned this, a prince of joy. Um, Hawker um, says that the word sadist is derived from another word, which is uh, shara, and it means to rule or to have authority. And then Haskell says, uh, it means Song of Joy, which is similar to Hitchcock's Prince of Joy, or That Which Remains, or The Remnant. So it has various meanings. We just picked the one, or I just picked the one red, because I wanted to make the point um, that these people claim to be alive, but they're in fact dead. Um, <coughs> question number three. I think I don't understand this question, or I don't know enough about it. Uh, there are two time prophecies connected with 391 years. Uh, the name Josiah, which both connect to July and August time period of the year. So, I guess the 391 years is Revelation 13. And it's a history of the kings, is, is that? Um, the, uh, the yeah, Revelation 13. Yeah, so the history of the kings of, uh, of Israel, starting from Saul. Your bone. Okay, so we're after Solomon. Sorry, there's there's two time prophecies: a 391 um, and six months. And then the one concerning uh, Revelation in 9.15. Uh, yes. Yes. Half. You can do uh, like a point 0.5 type thing. Yes. Yes. He, he was principally behind, yes. The two time prophecies connected with 391 years. One of them is. Yes. And the other one is connected to Israel. Mm -hmm. um, the name Josiah, which both connect to July, the July and August period of the year. So I'm not familiar with that. So, so I'm just saying that you can connect to both of them 391s. You can connect the name Josiah, one as the work of Josiah Litch, and the other one you can connect the time mm -hmm. prophecy to the King Josiah. Okay. And, and, and Yes, and one's the King Josiah, because it's, um, so that, he, there's that, his name, the name Josiah is connected to both the land prophecies, and then uh, the, the one of the, uh, the Islam ended around August time period, and sometimes, um, depending on the year, the, uh, the, the, the end of the 391 six months ends around July, August time period as well. So there's like a connection in the, in the time of the year when the end time prophecies ended. 
as well, as well as the name, and Wells as well as the number 391. Okay. So can you size connect for 300 Yes. And from Jerry to Zedekiah? Yes. Or, or Rehoboam uh, to Zedekiah, maybe you could okay. say, okay. as well. Yes. Applications have been made of these prophecies, <coughs> bringing them together. Some in the movement have rejected this application. So, um, I don't know who's rejected that application. Well, there's the, some have, um, well, my understanding that, um, that's, that's what I've been, I've, that's what I've heard, you know, I haven't really, some has been doubted anyway, from what I understand that hasn't been, uh, it's been discouraged, in a sense, from what I've heard. Okay. Um, what should we do with these prophecies? So we've got three options. Um, they could be interesting to make their application, seek to make another application, uh, seek to confirm the application that has been made. So is there one application or two? Uh, as far as I know, when these, when the, when the 2000 and, in 2016, the understanding of the name Josiah being was then connected to the 300 and it was, it was a 390 year prophecy in Ezekiel chapter four, but you can also that is just until the siege, but then there's another year and a half um, until the destruction of Jerusalem, so you can see a 391. And there was like something tantalizing about that because it seemed to connect to the 391 and the prophecy of Josiah Lech and we were wondering what to do about it. And it was only, it was only really when the time setting aspect become, become, <coughs> began into the movement that we then just lined them up line upon line, the, three, the 391s, and then we were able to predict a date in, in 2020, in July. Um, using bringing them their two prophecies together. So I'm just wondering, do we, or was that the right thing to do? Were we, is that, a, are we correct to do that, or is there, or we do, should we not be making any application with it, or should we be looking for another application? That was, um, there was a 391 days calculated from October last year, which brings you to the 9th of November 2019. So that was another, that was a separate application. I'm referring, I'm referring to an application where you lined the 391s um, up, up. You, you take the the 391 for the kings of Israel or, or Josiah, and you you line that up with the the 391 where that where the 391 of uh, Islam began on the uh, in 14 where, where at the 391 began in, in four, 1449 and goes till 1840, and it, it says. Um, it goes to, th to the 27th of July, and then there's you got the one hour, you add the two uh, to that. Uh, but if you line up the six months, um, from that date, it, it takes you to 2020. If, if people haven't maybe been familiar with it, uh, it maybe needs to be. Um, For me, the problem is that if we're going to make an application that Theodore is making about July 2020, mm -hmm. in some interaction between Islam and 
Well, we, we normally line that, line that up with the United States as uh, with um, the Balaam, um, having his foot crushed. Yes, and in Numbers 22, verses 25, 24 and 25, Balaam's between the walls of the vineyard. And the first... So the application's only been made, is being made that way because of the 391 taking you to 2020. Well, that was... Because um <coughs> before we would have taken that prophecy to um, another way, Mark, would we not? Well, we normally play out to the midnight cry. So it's no longer the midnight cry. Depending on which midnight cry you're referring to, I guess. Mm -hmm. when, it, when, that, when those studies were first done, that midnight cry, we would have said, would be what we understand Panium to be today. Yes. So I'm saying, we, so all of that information that we used to teach, when you add this information, it all becomes an issue of, of being in flux. But that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you'd maybe express it in a different way. So mm -hmm. we're changing what we used to understand about the story of Balaam, from my understanding. We're moving it from Panium to an event before Panium. Is that, is that correct? Am I understanding that correctly? Well, I am understanding that, uh, first of all, um, Balaam strikes the donkey or the ass and he's turned out of the way and we apply out to 9-11. Okay? And then he gets his foot crushed and we apply that there to Midnight Cry because we normally associate the, with being like the, the economy of the United States is going to be in a sense, the United States is going to be crippled. And because of that, their uh, condition, that they then agitate the Sunday law, and then the, the ass then falls, and sort of the Balaam falls with the ass at the end, and he strikes the ass, and the ass speaks. We normally relate that there, the speaking of a nation. The speaking is applied then to the, the Sunday law. Yes. So what I'm saying is you take this 391, we're changing that. We're moving at least a little way off from the midnight cry to, which I think we've done now, saying 2021. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, I'm, uh, I would suggest that there's two events to be marked at the midnight cry and or panium. And that one of them is <laughs> an attack of Islam upon the United States. Yes. And then there's the the event of Panium, which we get from the studies of Daniel 11, where we see uh, Antiochus then um, attacking Egypt. And so we, we recognize there's two events with Panium. Well, well, I I would be seeking to. I'm I'm trying to put this study out there to to get it assessed. Was what I I uh, would like to see, or if, uh, whether it be confirmed, or be, I know I want to have have it out there so people can see what's wrong with that or. If, it, if it's to be it's accepted, really it is. But uh, I don't think too many people have uh, looked at it. You know, some people have been. Uh, so how would you know what the application is? Let me ask you a different question. So the study we did yesterday about not understanding history past twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I, I don't know as to what the event is, uh, the details of the actual event, but there does seem to be some indication as, as to when that was going to happen. <coughs> there is some indication as to when it will happen, but as to the actual, what is actually going to the how uh, it's going to look, I'm not. I don't have the clarity on that. There's been some ideas, but I, I don't think to, I'm not. I wouldn't be I have the confidence to to place my full weight on them. Um, other people can 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 get involved in in this discussion. Um, I guess. The option is, it's an interesting, but we make, we make no application. So we can't really make an application today because we don't actually understand what, what's going to happen or what it will look like. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair assessment? Because well, we, I mean, we, mark, we can mark 2021, call it Panium. Um, I'm not sure what, that, what, what does that actually mean to us as a movement today, that we've got a date that's two years in the future and we don't really understand what it means and what it looks like, except you know, in you know, in a basic fashion, the king of the north, king of the south, um, have an interaction. It's the deadly wound of verse forty that's going to be inflicted, part B or part A, which brings us to the end of verse forty. It seems to me we don't we don't have much more information than that at the moment. Um, it's almost certain that our understanding of the role of Islam at the end of the world is either limited or incorrect. I don't know if you'd share that assessment. Um, you know, if we talk about Al Qaeda or ISIS, I'm no longer persuaded that that's what Islam is going to look like at the end of the world when we think about its continued interaction with the West seems to me a much more complex uh, geopolitical struggle, especially if you go back to the Millerite history. I don't know what your thoughts are on, on that are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so for, for me, <laughs> what my concern is that it's not an issue of accepting or rejecting those dates or even the methodology of those dates to critique whether they're correct or wrong. It's more about assuming that they're correct, what would we do with them today? Should we pursue a study um, to try to make an application? Um, I guess that's already been done anyway, to the degree to say that there's something going to happen with respect to Islam and having no understanding of what that actually looks like. So if that works has already been done, um, I guess we're bringing it up to the public domain again so people are free and able to, to access that information and, and review it. Um, so. What do you think? I don't know. I'm not sure what's at the back of your question to say, um, is it wrong or is it right? I presume you obviously believe that it's correct. I think there's evidence that supports the, uh, the application. But you're not sure what it means? Um, Except to say that there's yes. an interaction at that level, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you think by studying that at the moment that we would be able to to get that information? Well, I'm just, uh, just to like to bring it to people's attention, the study, as to whether they want to, people's own view is, if they're led by the Lord, to go in to, to look at it further, well be, well be it, you know, but... Um, uh, yeah, but I asked you a different question. Do you think we're able to actually probe into that and actually have a clearer understanding of what's going on? Mm -hmm. If the Lord opens it up. It Do you happen. think he would open up before November the 9th this year? You think 
in the dispensation that we're in. Mm -hmm. Well, according to your studies, that you're suggesting that. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm asking. Yes. I know that I'm suggesting that he won't, mm -hmm. based yes. upon the evidence that we have before us. I don't know if you yes. see it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm willing to accept that, there, that we may be limited in what we understand concerning it. Um, um, so, but if the Lord, I, I'm still would like to be open to if there is anything the Lord reveals, but. Um, but this, through, through this year study, it hasn't been anything I've been trying to uh, particularly aim at. You know, I, I just believe it's the Lord has been leading. And this year I haven't really been trying to force things, you know, through this study. And uh, <coughs> I, I believe I just want to be in that position where I think that the Lord, and when maybe his timing, maybe it isn't the timing to go into the details of it. Maybe it's going to be after the 9th of November that... Uh, that there'll be more light on this here subject will be opened up. Um, be open to that. I don't know if you've watched the presentations that were done in Tahiti earlier this year. I don't know if you had an opportunity to watch I did. them. I did. You did? Um, so you know, um, I think the last studies that were done, the last, I think if it was a 10 part series, the last two or three, dealt with the issue of Islam and actually began to place. 1840, in this very history that you're referring to. Yes. You're familiar with those studies? Yes. Um, I don't know if people are aware, you've probably, hopefully you'll have seen studies now that talk about threading information or threading the story through waymarks. Uh, if you're hopefully all familiar with that concept, what that means, yeah? If, if you do that, if, if you try to do a study in, with um, using that methodology, then immediately you find a problem when you deal with the story of Islam. So I'm not sure if you see what the problem is. 9-11, we tie up with what year in the Millerite history? 1840. 1840. And if you see the sequencing of events, what we've done is we've taken 1840 and taken it out of sequence. We now have enough evidence to show that the way we've done 9-11, if you're going to run a thread through both histories, actually doesn't follow that methodology. It's a totally different way of approaching the problem. So I'm not saying that to say that 9-11 is wrong, but what I am saying is if you're going to follow this methodology of running a story through, um, what you begin to realise is that there are proxy wars going on in the history of the Millerites and those proxy wars are centred in the Middle East. There's a 10 year war that's been fought beginning in 1831 and ending in 1841. And that 10 year war is in two segments. There's two years at the beginning and two years at the end. 31 to 33, and then 39 to 41. You can juggle those numbers. And immediately you realise that 1839 to 1841, what's in the middle of that? 1840. And if you see a 10-year proxy war in that history, and now we're identifying a 10-year proxy war in our history, in fact, the second 10-year proxy war, from 2011 to 2021 and you overlay that with Millerite history, where would 1840 be? 2020. So it may be 2020 and I'm not saying it's not, but it's definitely between 19 and 21. So now we have to ask ourselves the question, how did we ever put 1840 at 9-11 when we're now beginning to see that it's um, an event that should, uh, should be much further along in history. So we're having to uh, wrestle with that issue of how we go about doing that. Um, so <clears throat> to answer your question, question number three, when you say people have rejected it, is it just an interesting application? Should we make another application? Should we seek to confirm the application? There's already studies that are out today that indicate 
um, whatever it looks like, 1840 can be applied to the history um, that's been identified between um, here, in this history, somewhere in this history, 1840 is, is here. So Islam is being identified right here, which is where the studies that you're talking about here, and I guess the further studies that you have done, um, are indicating. So I'm not sure if, I'm not sure where the rejection would be coming because it's certainly not from me um, because I've already put studies out there. Um, is it interesting? That's like saying, is it a coincidence? Which you don't believe it. It's a rhetorical question. Um, should we seek to make another application? Two and three I find interesting. Um, I don't know if we can say confirm the application. I'm not sure I would have worded it that way because I don't even know. I don't think anybody, if they're, if they're frank about it, actually knows what the application is. We can say Islam and we can say the West, but I don't think we can go much further than that. Maybe confirm the, uh, the date rather than the application. We know a wee bit of the application in the sense of a strike <coughs> upon the United States. And maybe that's what I... Yeah, I, I, so I'm not, yeah, Sorry, so what it seems to me is uh, that, what well, the question is, it's not so much to make another application, it's should we try to understand deeper what is going to happen there? And I think you just said it's, that's not the question. The question is, is the date correct? Is it July 2020 or is it not July 2020? So I guess the people who have done those studies, people watch those studies, they will be able to confirm whether or not the dates are correct or not. For me, I've never had a real concern about the dates. Um, and when I've spoken to Sister Tess personally, she doesn't have a problem with dates. 2020 and 2021 have been, at least from her perspective in the movement for the last October to now, I don't know how many months that is, nine months at that time. Um, Maybe it's even September, September, October. So there's no, there's no objection to the dates themselves per se. And if we've now gone to a month and to a day, that may well be true. But I guess the concern that I have is once we have that date, what do we do with it today? And I'm not sure that we can do anything with it. And, and, the, and I, I guess your question number one, um, sort of highlights that, because your question number one was, do we have any more clarity concerning November the 9th, this year? And my answer is no. So you know, if we're struggling with 2019, we have a lot more to go to understand even our own history and the tests that, um, that we're having to face before we reach those, those uh, further, further dates. And I just want to reiterate the point that when we talk about rejection, I'm going to say, just say rejecting the study of time, which is what question three is really about. I don't think it's really about is, is it to do with Islam or not to do with Islam, if, if, if I can say that. I don't think the application is about whether there's something going to happen with Islam or not. I think the issue is, is the calculation of time the correct calculation or not? Uh, my response to that would be, I don't think we're being tested on time. I don't think the issue is time. So whether or not the calculation is correct or not, to me, doesn't seem a big issue. I have no reason to think that it's not correct. Uh, but I think it's a relatively straightforward calculation that you can do. I know the work that you've done is a more sophisticated calculation. From my perspective, you may not say that it is. And it's just confirming these things. Um, to me, what the test is, as I've explained yesterday, I think we're being tested on two streams of information. Um, so when we talk about rejecting something, to me the rejection would be the rejection of a calculation based upon time, or a time calculation. And I don't think we're being tested on that issue. 
So I don't have any major issues against the calculation of time to see whether to say it's you know it's wrong and we shouldn't be doing that. My concern is that the test we currently have is taking the movement by surprise. Um, and I want to say this carefully, if we're distracted by calculations that lead us to um, focus our attention on Islam, uh, we might not be fully engaged in what the current test is. I say that with caution, because already today we know there is escalation in the Middle East. We already know today the events that are occurring in 2019 are the same events that occurred, I don't know if anybody knows the date. When similar events that are happening today happen in the past. No, recent. 19, within two years, 1987. In 1987, I'm not sure if we're aware of what was happening, they were bombing tankers. And the same thing is happening today. So, e whilst we're saying that our test is these three things that we're discussing, already the work of Islam is beginning to be looked at and investigated. Um, and I would encourage people, when we start considering Islam, and I don't mean this to say we shouldn't understand the, the dates or the numbers, but to try to understand what the role of Islam is today. We've already, um, we've already got enough information, either in presentations that are already in the public domain, or in, um, I guess, I don't know what's called, private conversations or just casual conversations. Don't say private; it makes it sound funny. Just conversations that people are having in their, just their thoughts about what's going on, that Islam and its activities are already beginning to be seen on the prophetic stage. And it's not in the form of, the term that I've used is like an independent ministry like Al-Qaeda um, or ISIS. These are nation states that are being involved here, just like they were in the Millerite history. Um, for those of you I know very few of us were, and those of us who were probably don't remember with clarity. Uh, back in 2012, when we were discussing the subject of time, one of the recurring themes that kept on coming up is the role of Islam. And we were quite certain at the time, we didn't know about ISIS at that stage. I'm not saying ISIS wasn't beginning to exist, but our focus in that history was on Iran and its interaction with the United States um, based upon things that were happening then but also based upon things that, are, that were happening in the past and you see that Iran, Iraq, Syria, uh, particularly Iran how they're coming in the news now uh, it's changing the way we I think it's going to change the way we understand what the role of Islam is at the end of the world and what it means when we say um, Balaam gets his foot crushed um, at the second interaction with the donkey, at the second step, if I can say it that way. I don't think we have good clarity of what that's going to look like. You know, we're, what we think a strike on the United States means. But we're already beginning to see that work, and I think studies are all going to... Well, you've, the study in Tahiti has already been put out. Uh, I think more studies will be put out on the political affairs that are going on between Islam and the West. So whilst we have these three things to consider, there are, there's, the role of Islam is already beginning to be discussed. So um, it, to me, I don't see, uh, as I said, when you said rejection, I'm not sure where that rejection came from. Yeah. I, I, I don't see rejection going on. I see confirmation that the work of Islam is now coming under scrutiny. Um, uh, Jeff had uh, done some presentations <coughs> in the last camp meeting in March in Arkansas, where he, um, his, his last presentation was called 20, 
2020 or or some it was 2021 or something, and um, where he had sort of people coming with concerns about time setting beyond uh, Rafia, the date of Rafia, and that we shouldn't be doing it. And he was then countering that there with his concerns about not doing that, you know that the saying that God uh, lifted his hand off the, the 20, the 20 three hundred days and the twenty five twenty and he paralleled that then to Rafi and Panium and how the um, events went together and we can't have one without the other and that sort of he's using them and that because of the Millerites not focusing on twenty five twenty they couldn't see eighteen sixty three uh, which he related to Panium. So he had he had concerns about um, not uh, t to not consider Panium would be like to to not see 1863 to that time period, that's his yeah. argument. So, so let me try and address that issue. I think there's been misunderstanding in many quarters in our movement. Um, if you're going to make the argument or the assertion that Raphael and Panium are a couple, that they shouldn't be separated, which is I think the argument that you're suggesting that was being made, and other people are saying um, we should not be delving into that um, into that um, era. I think there is there are valid points on both on both sides of that argument, and I think it's, I think the reason why there's dissension is because there's a lack of understanding of. Let me say this of what Sister Tess has put into the public domain, or even perhaps what she's communicated to people privately. When the Midnight Cry message was first given to this, uh, to the movement, uh, 2019, 2020, and 2021 uh, were all given at the same time in a single message. So, so that's the first point. This argument that they should never be disconnected or you can't have one without the other. Um, I'm not sure why people would make that argument to say it would be wrong to do that or it'd be wrong to leave them because it was never left. They were always put together. She did it right from the very beginning. So that's the first point. The second point is even though you know the date, it doesn't really help you much. Because you know we're saying we know November the 9th, and people are saying, well, that doesn't help us much. It's only now we're really beginning to see what the important issues are that's going to bring us to November the 9th, even still without knowing the exact nature of the event. And so I think there, there's points to be made on both sides. The reason why people are saying that we shouldn't be looking at anything past 2019 is because we don't know enough about 2019. We know nothing really about those events. So it becomes a futile endeavor to try to probe into that history to try and understand what's going on. We should really try to deal with our own history. The reason why we're even in this, even in this dilemma is because we're in a time period now that we never have been before. Um, if you go back to I just, I just gave a random date here, I said 2000. We don't know anything, we don't even know 9-11 to begin with. Um, but if we had, we don't know anything past 9-11. If you come to the history from 9-11 onwards and you're in 2012, we're predicting um, 2014, we know nothing past that. We don't think, you know, all we know is conventional understanding, close of probation crisis is about to return. But now we come to 2014, in 2019, and we're in 18, and we already know what's going to happen on the other side. So I don't think um, whatever side of this argument someone stands on, if that's even the right way of saying it, I don't know if there is partisanship. There may have been in the past, but I don't know if it exists anymore. There shouldn't be any argument that we don't have some, that we have some visibility on the other side. We do. Separate to the studies that Theodore has already done, uh, those dates were already there. Um, whether you go to the study of the presidents or you go to the study of Sister Tess. So that 
those dates are, have already been in the public domain for many, many months. Um, so I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a valid argument on, for anyone to say that we don't know that information. We do know. The point is, what do we do with those dates? How do we handle them today? And what what I'm hearing and what I share with people is that we should be cautious about delving into this history. And all I can say is too much. Can't say that we shouldn't delve into it because. If you do a study on Islam, by definition you're delving into that history. By doing a study on the Millerite history, which I think is an essential part of the history uh, of our understanding. And the reason why we need to understand the Millerite history is based upon some of the studies or discussions that we've had on camera and off camera this week. We know that Christ was to return before 1888. And if that's the case, there would not have been a Sunday law in the form or fashion that we know it. And what I mean by that is, Congress would not have passed a law enforcing the worship of Sunday and uh, desecrating the, the Seventh-day Sabbath. It would just not have happened that way. And if that's the case, would we have had 1899 or an equivalent and there's no evidence that we would have. And if we wouldn't have had evidence for that, we have to reevaluate Daniel 11 verse 40. And if you're going to reevaluate Daniel 11 verse 40, you have to read it in a different way. And if you read it in a different way, what way are we going to read it? The only way that we have is, we'll go with Uriah Smith's way, if we want to use it that way. We'll go with his way of doing it. And if you do that, then you see, what is the subject of Daniel 11 verse 40, or the theme? What's the overarching theme or subject matter? No. No. Yeah, even though he doesn't say it. Islam. Daniel 11 verse 40 teaches you about Islam. But today, <clears throat> if you go to Daniel 11 verse 40, particularly if you go to the studies that Brother Chawatu did, he will argue what? What will he argue when he goes to Daniel 11 verse 40? <coughs> that there's no, no story about Islam? Islam cannot be seen. And he used that logic to go back into the first part of Daniel 11 to work out Raphia and Panium. If you follow through with the studies that he has done, you have five events. The first one is 1798, the next one is 1989, and the last one is Sunday Law. And you have two events in the middle, and you don't know where to place them. There's no reference point. They're just two battles called Raphia and Panium. And who are they? Who's the battle between? Who are the belligerents? King of the North, King of the South. King of North, King of the South. There's no Islam in there. If there's no Islam in that story, and you've gone from 1989 to the Sunday Law, what way mark in our history is missing? 9-11. So you don't have a 9-11. So can you find 9-11 in Daniel 11 verse 40? With the words? No. The way we do it, you can't. So that confirmed his understanding. So we have Raphia and Panium, which we call Midnight, Midnight Cry. So the only point I want us to see is if the theme of the Millerites was Islam, what's our theme of verse 40? And don't say King of the North. It's King of the South. Our focus is King of the South and the Millerite focus is, the, is Islam. And so when you start looking at the concept of whether or not Christ could have returned before 1888, and we say, yes, he could have, you then have to reevaluate your understanding of verse 40. And the King of the South is no longer a subject of that verse. The subject of the verse is Islam. I don't mean the subject grammatically. Obviously, grammatically, it's King of the North. I understand that. But I'm, but I'm taking the theme. So now you know that verse 40 is a story about Islam, which ties into the study of Acts 27, the south wind and the east wind. 
So we already understand that, and we're not even at the end of 2019 yet, and we already know we already know that Islam, we've known this for a long time, is going to b interact with us somewhere in this history before the Sunday law. We already, we've, we've known it for a long time. Now we're becoming more precise with that. So what I'm saying is, as a consequence of doing a study on the Sunday law issue, when you go back to the Millerite history, which is based upon the understanding of when the second advent was, and we're marking that now in 1863, to make that assertion, you have to reevaluate how verse 40 is understood. And if you're going to reevaluate that, the King of the South, the way we understand it, Russia, Soviet Union, no longer becomes, a, no longer remains a viable uh, position. We have to reevaluate our whole understanding because the King of the South is whom? Egypt. King of the South is Egypt for the Millerites, not for us, for the Millerites. Egypt, what kind of Egypt? Radical Islam. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but bad question. Literal Egypt, you know, the Egypt that we, yeah. you know, some kind of spiritual, like, move to Europe or something. It's actually Egypt. So, not arguing about the rights and wrongs of all of that, but it becomes a story of the Middle East. So, we, we get that information, it kind of just drops on our lap through another study. So, when you see that, and then you start using the rules that we're using now, and you put a storyline through the Millerite history, it begins, <clears throat> it begins pre-1798, but by the time you get to 1798, you have a struggle in the Middle East. 1798, you can go to 1821, 1831, 1833, 1839, 1840, 1841, you can thread a whole history through the Millerite line, which is exclusively about Islam easy to do now. And the key thought that we have on that history, Revelation, um, yeah, Revelation 13, brings you to 1840, that now can be connected as a thread right back from the time of the end to 1841. And when you do that, you have to now get 1840 and place it in a in a different position than we have in the past. So we have a, we, we have a lot of evidence already about... Sorry? You've got two before that 1841, didn't you? And you've got 1839? 1839? Yes, I've got 1839 to 1841. You know, so that's the second uh, Turkish-Egyptian war, the second Syrian war. 2019 to 21, 20, you've got like Syria. <coughs> so my uh, brother Julia said, that's 2020. So I'm not arguing that it's not. I haven't you know, made a strong assertion that it, that it is or it isn't. But all I'm saying is we have, we're beginning to build up a picture that is, is already starting to take us beyond this. And in the midst of all of that, like you say, you know, if the Lord opens things up, he opens things up. Because I certainly not, wasn't digging any information about Islam, it just kind of just drops. What we see that happening in the news about uh, the bombing of these tankers and the escalation uh, is certainly the, not what uh, President Trump wanted. Um, all of us were thinking that ISIS, the story of ISIS is all kind of like wrapping up and our focus is now on the King of the South. And, and what's happening with that. And, and there's still a lot of history to go through before we get to the end of the King of the South. And now Islam is coming up. So both things we're having to grapple with. So, and I, and I, and I know you didn't mean it in this way, but I don't see any rejection of uh, the role of Islam at the end of the world. We have mounting evidence um, that the preliminary studies we did on Balaam even though they may not be 100% correct, have some validity to them. The subject of 2020, just the year itself, is a matter of public record. 
through various speakers, uh, through various studies. I'm not suggesting that those studies are going to stop, that people are going to find them. Um, with respect to what those dates mean and what they will look like, I think we're probably going to find, we're going to be surprised by, by it. I think it's going to be much more political than we suspect. Um, and we're already beginning to see the, the beginning of that, and, which is what we should do, really. <coughs> if we want to understand what's going to happen in this day, here in this history, we have to trace back the thread. And we're already beginning to see, I'm not saying we're at the beginning of it, because I think the beginning has already be, been in the past, we're beginning to see the threads of what this history here will look like with respect to Islam. And yet, despite all of that, our movement really needs to address these issues, in my opinion, um, because these, have, these affect us in our present situation, how we view things, the sides that we're taking in the political arena. Um, and some of us who aren't American might think it's not our struggle, but I think we're going to find that all of us are going to be confronted with these issues. So I'd, I hope that was a fair explanation of, of, of your thing. So, um, there is so much information coming in, are we expected to know everything by 9-11? November the 9th, it's just, yeah, that's what, they, that's what the person means. Um, and the answer is, yes, of course. <laughs> of course we're expected to know everything by then. Um, so the question is, how big is everything? How big is everything? So I would argue <clears throat> that everything you need to understand is on this board, and we did it in about an hour yesterday, hour and a half. I would argue that that is everything. Um, we covered many things. We covered an understanding of Millerite history, when we start dealing with arrivals, increase of knowledge, formalization, empowerment. So we've brought in the Millerite history. And even though you may not know the intricacies of that, there are a few key dates, it's not many. So we did that. I think relatively straightforward. Um, then we looked at our reform line, and there aren't that many dates. So we have those dates, again, uh, not that many. We just overlay some um, symbols on those dates. Time of the end, empowerment of the first Sunday law, etc. Uh, if you don't know how that's done, then you do need to know that kind of information. But if you, if you were able to fill in this, then you already know that information. So you know all of that. Uh, then we need to know that there are these two ray marks in between. Um, then we need to see if we can relook at our reform line in a slightly different way. So we've cut the line up in these four dispensations, dropped them down like this, and then we can just populate the dates. So again, relatively straightforward. Uh, not much information, I don't think. You could learn it in a week. You know, you could memorize everything on this board within a week with comfortably, if you were diligent about it. Um, and then just the explanation, understanding of it, to see that this was uh, a test on line upon line, time, two streams of information, and we're not sure about this one. And the two stream for, streams of information, just to know that it comes in three categories, conspiracy theories, race and gender. That's one side, and the other side is conspiracy, race and gender. And you need to decide which side of the argument you're on. Are you on the wrong side of gender, the wrong side of race, the wrong side of conspiracy theories? Um, what more is it than that? It's all pretty straightforward. I think the problem that people are saying, well, um, look at Tessie's material, there is a lot of information on there, and, and there is. So when it says that we expect to know everything, I'm saying yes in concept. 
the concept we should know, I think, is really here. The proof or the details, we would understand to a degree. Not everyone understands all of those details. Some will to, to one degree and some won't to, to another. So I don't think we need to all understand the details in the same way. Maybe it's a bit much for everyone. Um, because the information keeps on coming out, it keeps getting refined. Um, you've all heard, even if you don't fully understand about the Second World War and its impact upon our reform line, um, you haven't heard much about the First World War. If you've, no, if you've taken note, not much discussion on the First World War that's been done. So the First World War is going to be a subject of uh, study in the coming weeks and months as uh, those studies privately have been developed and have been worked out. They're going to be started to uh, given publicly and then they will get refined. World War II is pretty much in the public domain. It's World War I that needs, uh, needs putting out and explaining its, its relationship between World War I and World War II and how we apply that. Because we do World War I, uh, I just do it this way. One plus two equals three. Yeah? That's a, a triple application. Triple application is one plus two equals three. But we'll find that one is three and also two is three. So then there's further information, further light about our own reform line that's containing the history of World War I that needs to be put out. Um, these are, again, important details but we just need to get the key points when we talk about everything. The way to know everything is to teach. If you're not up teaching, um, it becomes hard to learn the everything and retain them. So I really want to encourage people to stand up and present in whatever format that looks. You know, if it's a small group study or you ring in your friend, you do Friday night Vespers online, whatever it looks like, you really need to be presenting if you're not you won't see the weaknesses and you won't be motivated or even, I don't think you effectively have had the ability to teach. So I think it's important to do that. So yes, we're expected to know everything. Um, the key points of everything, obviously we need to understand line upon line, you need to be comfortable with time and we need to know about the two streams of information. There's no point in knowing everything if you get this wrong. What time is it? Oh, yeah, so we'll better stop because we've got um, a busy morning. Um, all is like over time. <coughs> so, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to ask and pray that you would be with us. May each of us um, press closer together on the present truth message that you have given to us. We know, Lord, we have evidence already that you're beginning to bring light um, to your people on the events um, after the close of probation. And yet, this movement as a whole is struggling with many of the issues that are currently testing us. We ask and pray that you would give us wisdom and grace, that you would guide and direct us. Be with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>